and welcome! Today in this video we're going to be looking at Crisis, but a very special version of the game, an anniversary of a video I put out nearly a year ago today talking about basically how amazing Crisis was for the time it released. And it's still amazing today, but what's this over here? John? Hey, how's it going? Hey John, how are you doing? <laughs> this is pretty good i'm i'm in crisis how's it going I'm, I'm also in crisis and that hurts actually quite a bit more than you can imagine um so yes here we are we are playing crisis one in co-op this is a mod that was in development for a while no longer in active development sadly but it does work but we're not here to talk about co-op specifically are no, we? well a little bit i mean come on a little we're big bit. fans a little but bit we're here to talk about kind of modifying an old game with uh, new graphics, essentially. Uh, I've done a video on Reshade before, but uh, a new version of Reshade has come out recently, which you can support through Patreon, a link you see through here, that adds a shader with a version of, I would call it, path-traced global illumination. We'll talk more specifically how it officially works, but if I open up Reshade, it looks like this right here, and you can see I have it open, going through all of those things, and here is the RT, turning on and off, ray tracing, on and off like that. That's right, and if you set it up with a shortcut, you know, this kind of gives it an idea of what it looks like, being able to toggle it in real time. And it's true, There's there's a, there are factors as to why this may not seem as dramatic as some other games. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk about so, why. You know, We'll explain more of that specifically, but this is a neat little bonus that adds some additional visual depth to a classic game and sort of an interesting new way to play. Yeah, it definitely is. And uh, But let's first go a bit, I would say, go a bit forward yeah. to show a bit of Crisis's grandeur. Um, That's right. Is, so first we're going to start by, I'm going to zoom past you like that, <laughs> like a, it's awesome. Like an animal. Oh my god. This is crisis. That's but don't, do. don't run too fast, because in crisis you do damage to yourself if you run into things. Exactly. <laughs> you don't want to do that. It's a funny thing. It was, in crisis, anything We've goes. never seen anyone move this fast in crisis in multiplayer before, I think. It's always slower in multiplayer, usually. But yes, yeah, right. here's that all-too-famous scene as the sun moves up. The time of day changes. Oh, look at this. Look at this. This is just... It's, it's just lovely. I know. Jesus. Wow. Uh, even at 1080p, I'm getting some slight dips in frame rate Oh, there. that's probably the usual... Did you zoom in? No. Oh. If you zoom in on Crisis when, on this area, it always runs slower. Oh, well. There is a little bit of a performance hit to using... <laughs> but let's let's talk about our rigs if we're going to talk about performance. Oh, wait. Actually, I'm, it's not the... It's not the uh, Reshade causing that. Oh. oh, no? <laughs> no, it's just... Oh, well, hey, you know, this is Crisis. There's a reason why <laughs> your video last year was talking about melting PC still <laughs> in the modern era, because depending on how you have the game configured, uh, it can melt PCs. But yes, let's talk about our configuration. So, uh, you know, as always, I'm running the old i9 7900X with the 2080 Ti, 32 gigabytes of memory, and we are running this in direct x9 yeah. mode uh due to a limitation with a crisis specifically <laughs> yeah. and its inability to pass depth depth information to reshade yeah. which is required for this to function and, uh, unfortunately yeah. i mean i i'm direct x9 has its own problems which we'll talk about but yeah oh, basically yes. a depth buffer looks quite a lot like that if you can see it on my screen yeah, right now i've switched to it as well and this is Reminiscent of our Quake 2 video, uh, where we played large sections of it, um, just showing just the GI with no tech. This is a little different, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, a depth buffer, I guess you could also call it like the Z buffer, basically. Yeah. This is a screen space basically saying how far away things are from one another. And it's used in games to, well, back in the old days, I would say, to keep polygons straight. <laughs> but Well, you mean, yeah. yeah, it's basically like an array that determines, because, you know, it's a 2D screen. You have your X, Y axis, but you need to understand on the Z axis as well. And it's kind of a way of keeping track of that so you understand where objects are within a scene. Where'd you go there, John? And Where'd you go that? there? I'm, <laughs> I'm up here on this okay. cliff just admiring stuff. Okay, so yeah. And I'm um, one thing that very famously happened back in the day was Crisis used its, you know, depth buffer to 
basically create SSAO, which you can see when I turn off this and I look under John's feed. There's a slight darkening under his feed, which, you know, Crisis One was very famous for having, I would say, invented for real time graphics and games, at least the first bigger known implementation out there. Okay, well, you know, so obviously this being crisis, before we can sit down and really examine things closely, we're going to have to go take care of some enemies. So I say we get down there and do yeah, so. Yeah, let's get rid of them right now before they keep trying to kill us. Uh-oh. Oh, Jesus, don't die, John. I'm not dead, but due to the... Due to the way reshade works, it causes my mouse to go outside of the monitor, and I clicked on my secondary monitor, <laughs> so I all, all tabbed out of the game. But I'm back. These these Koreans are a little different than the ones from the original Crisis. They seem to take a little bit more damage. Also, yeah, I, I should commend this game for the fact that I was able to alt tab there for a second, and it came back, and it's still working. It's the magic of Windows Vista right now, John. That's right, this was all about DX10, Windows Vista. <laughs> but, you know, oh, come it on. is kind of interesting. Here we are going back in time, you know, playing a game that was basically before any sort of this ray tracing nonsense ever existed. And we're using a mod by someone who goes by the handle of Marty McFly. We are going back in time and changing history right now with this. I just thought about that. <laughs> this is true. You are completely correct. Uh, Marty's a, a pretty great fellow. I had a good conversation about how his technique works. Uh, his name is Pascal Geisha. And uh, is it, it's what? Pascal Geisha. OK, great. <laughs> um, but basically, after John and I, is the, is the, boat, is the boat dead? Yeah, we're good. No. We gotta take it out. It's not doing much, is it, though? And my shots are not. Yeah, this is this is very seems very ineffective. It's hard to tell if I. Why can I? I can, I'm not even hitting it. <laughs> that's very strange. Okay, so this obviously this co-op mod was abandoned. It was. It's not perfect, but uh, here no. we are playing Crisis. Uh, I guess in multiplayer co-op. But <laughs> let's go over here, John. Oh, by the way, there's the alien in yeah, this guy because he didn't. It didn't play the intro cutscene. Look at the alien so. in the sky from the... There he is. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is really interesting. But now we have full access to the yeah, dock. This is now, we can examine some of the features of... How this it works. Of, I guess, reshade in general and how the RT specifically... Yeah, I'm going to grab some ammo. ...path tracing works in this. Uh, first of all, though, one of the limitations of this mod is that you cannot uh, interact with most yeah. objects. So breakables do not function. You cannot pick up things. Um, I wanted to pick up and throw chickens at the enemies as usual, <laughs> which is like, you know, I like to play on the most difficult setting, uh, enemies speaking Korean and using chickens as I weapons. know, that, that's usually, the only that's way. basically European Extreme Delta and, you know, typical play to play Crisis. Precisely. <laughs> okay, so basically this version of the mod, if we take a look at it, let's take a look at a point of intersection right here. Mm, like Here, here's a good idea. Yeah, what's up? Laser, laser pointer. Yeah. Point it up, yeah, like right, 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 so see, like right there. Or so and look under, look under the dumpster and next to the plant and everything. You know, like places that are completely occluded like that are always interesting. Yeah. So basically, this mod is a form of path tracing, which is you know an extension of ray tracing that traces fully within screen space. So it is different than like RTX style ray tracing, or even different than that uh, path traced Minecraft that we looked at earlier. Uh, it doesn't have information from outside of screen space. It just cannot with the information that reshade is allowed to give to it, which is a color buffer and the depth buffer. And the depth buffer, like John pointed out earlier, looks very much so like this. This is with the GI on and looking through the depth buffer. Basically, you can see how color from the various things are bleeding across the environment as rays traverse through it, hit an object, and bounce light off of it. And based upon where there's no bounce light hitting, that's where you also get that ambient shadow. Normally in games, that's faked, that ambient shadow, without tracing rays necessarily, through ambient occlusion. So this has it's basically like a more advanced form of screen space and occlusion that takes yeah, into account that's what I was gonna takes into account bounced lighting as well. So you can get some pretty cool effects though just by doing that. Um, like you can see like how the green of the leaves is affecting the area around the outside 
of this hut here, which is something normal Crisis doesn't have. And in fact, if I were to switch over to turning off reshade, you can see how even normal Crisis, which is a good looking game, can look pretty different actually. Um, this It does, <laughs> This yes. is obviously using standard screen space and inclusion that Crisis invented, more or less. And it's still, I mean, it looks like Crisis, but there's something to be said about just how good the image actually looks when it has more light bleeding around in it. Uh, Crisis was a game caught in a weird point in time. It's before there was a lot of bounce lighting in the game in real time at all. So if you go over to normal Crisis view here, the only color that you really get in shadows itself is like a grayish color. That's yeah, exactly. There's there's no real indirect lighting in this game, and this is you know obviously before there were attempts at faking yeah. it. Because we've seen we've seen a lot of attempts <laughs> at this as well, you know, do, essentially doing like, you know, uh, baked or finding ways to essentially simulate the effect of indirect lighting in different games. Some are more effective than others. Crisis doesn't really do it at <laughs> yeah. all in that sense. Uh, it's just too early. I mean, this is 2007, yeah. and like you said, they basically invented screen space ambient occlusion uh, and other very cool tricks. But yeah. For me, one of the places where this really shows showcases is these interiors, yeah. right? So I'm in normal crisis mode, and if you look around edges, you can see where their SSAO is used, and it's sort of, you know, it's pretty rough by today's standards, I suppose, but you see the idea they're going for. But you turn on um, reshade here, and bam, you just get that all that ambient shadowing, you know, the places that where light is not hitting, uh, there's so much more depth in the yeah, scene. Yeah, and also you can see the point where the the light is coming through the windowsill here. You can see a bit of bounce light actually going around the edge of the windowsill as well. Like it's 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 also propagating light as well as excluding it. Something that normal crisis doesn't have at all. Um, but like I said, it's in screen space, so it looks pretty awesome in a still image. And especially like yeah. if you go outside the hut here, you can see that it's like perfectly dark inside. It's doing what it's doing properly. The only problem is when you move around, like any sort of thing in screen space. We see this all the time with screen space and inclusion and screen space, you know, like screen space reflections. If I go through here, exactly. you can see it kind of phasing. Um, there's yep. There's just like a limitation. That's just a, exactly. It's a limitation. I mean, areas that are out of screen space, obviously <laughs> by their nature, you can't pull data yeah. from that. So, I mean, I mean, it's just a limitation. It, it's also why this is running at all in real time while bouncing what is essentially three rays per pixel. If you if you look at open up the the reshade here, you can see I'm using three rays per pixel. Uh, over one frame, and then it accumulates over time, which is why you also get a kind of ghosting looking image when you, you know, move your gun around and cover things up. There's a slight bit of ghosting. There's, like, Reshade doesn't actually have that much information to work with beyond this depth buffer. Yeah, that's kind of what you were saying. I mean, it's like they're actually like tracing back from, uh, like, starting from an LDR yeah. buffer and have to, so th they're working with the limited information <laughs> available to them. Uh, within this it's and still producing uh, finding a way to do it so yeah this is you know it's easy you can see the difference when you're toggling but it you know when you're just playing it may not seem that significant <laughs> and this is by no means like okay this is ray no, tracing no. or something this is this is an interesting sort of solution to gi yeah. in a game like this and it does it just adds additional depth it's not a game changer like it was with say minecraft i'd no. say but it's still fascinating, and I really appreciate what is possible yeah, with I'm, something like I mean, Reshade. Pascal was saying himself that this is a generic Reshade plugin. It quite literally works with any game from DX9 all the That's way right. up to DX11. Any game you could really want, as long as you have a depth provider. Exactly. And in this case, if it were actually native, like for example, like if we were to go the case of an EMB series kind of modification to a game, where it would actually directly go into the game and edit the shaders and have an idea of where game objects are, well, then it could be done natively as like a real style of ray tracing, kind of more like the Minecraft style that we've seen earlier. That would, of course, make it no longer a generic plugin, though, which is the That's whole right. point of reshade in general. Um, but there's nothing stopping a you know. 
a really you know dutiful community member from doing that you know going in and out and trying to get this working for crisis as a game and honestly i think a game like crisis is worth it um just playing this now just loading it up again i i'm just constantly surprised about how good looking this game is and now how how with this kind of extra layer of life that is added by seeing color finally bleeding in, into the environment like, right. like the blue from this this can here going a bit around i mean it's not obviously physically correct necessarily because it's but it's, it's, there. it's there but like the one thing that reshade can't do is it doesn't know the direction of lighting necessarily from exactly. the sun exactly so it's basing the lighting direction upon pixel brightness if i'm not mistaken so any pixel that's brighter will definitely will as a as a ray hit it will be counted as light sources essentially and that causes probably some errors where there wouldn't be bounce lighting necessarily like this would maybe not be as bounced blue as you could think but there's only so much can be do on, done in screen space yeah so let's continue a yeah, bit yeah. further and, and take a look through here now yeah obviously we can't so one one other thing though that so he, Pascal's <laughs> worked on right. some other interesting oh, additions yeah. and I believe one of them is uh SSR, you can turn on screen space reflections, <laughs> and they apply to everything. <laughs> the, I was just I was just sampling this a bit before when you were chatting. I've turned it back on now, and it looks better on a large flat plane, yeah. of course. But it's kind of crazy to see, like there's no, it doesn't. Essentially, it treats every surface as glossy. Yeah. I mean, it's like that one episode of SpongeBob where everything in the future is chrome. <laughs> it's like everything exactly. is exactly like you just look the dirt. The dirt the is the dirt chrome. is chrome. Oh, it just looks like really, <laughs> but it's real. It's very strange looking, and I can see this being interesting. Yeah. But again, they don't have like surface information. Yeah, I they're guess, really like of per material or anything. There like that. really isn't. I guess there'd probably some maybe be some way to do it based upon the roughness, based upon how bumpy a material looks in screen space. Or yeah, something. But maybe so. Bad. No, they couldn't do that. But another thing that I'm running with here, as John kills those Koreans, is I've also used uh, Bloom and SMAA and LumaSharp and the Bloom is also another part of this uh, shader sheet, uh, sh shader suite written by Pascal and I've kind of tuned it to a more crisis looking Bloom. It starts off pretty saturated looking but crisis is you know it has really great post-processing but at the same time it was you know rather conservative oh. with how bloomy it looked in comparison to something like Gears of War or I don't know. A lot of games back then were very bloomy, and Crisis was not at all. It, you know, it kind of took that like clinical PC look to a game, and but it, it was good looking though. So I was, I altered by accident again. I just died, John. Oh no! How did you do that? What what happened, dude? The guy killed me. Oh boy. So basically, I just died, and this is, this is yeah. a symptom, basically, and of how we've been trying to get this work all day. This version of Crisis we're playing is basically the equivalent of the version of Crisis that fell off the back of a Romanian truck and then you found on the side of the ditch. <laughs> There's nothing that should be letting this work right now at all, John, right? This is a ridiculous thing, yeah. So. You dying there set us back about 40 minutes. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to guesstimate. Uh, that's how... So the mod is very unfinished. You basically can't die. <laughs> uh, so this is like the, the Counter-Strike kind of approach, but like taken to the extremes. It's like when you die, you have to reboot everything and like start from scratch. And, and it might work. And it might work. For example, like we just started this up again and actually all the AI on my screen is not synced correctly with animations. If you look over here, Jester <laughs> in this scene was just kind of flying by. Well, on John's screen, he looked like he was moving rather normally. So, it, yeah. and, you know, you can spawn sometimes without your suit functioning. You can spawn without your guns functioning. Just a whole lot doesn't work. So this is very much so... Well, an abandoned product. Nothing's wrong with that in the end. It's a, the effort is no. really nice, but this has been our entire day trying to get this working. Yeah, this is this yeah. was hours of, of work to actually get the connection to work. Uh, GameSpy is long shut down. Punk Buster. This looks so good, punk. by the way, when you move through the. This looks this like does. here. Just walk in front of me like this, like just like through it. It's like, oh, wait, there's a dude yeah. over here. What's this about? Uh -oh, uh -oh. <laughs> Did you just see this? 
Oh wait, John, stand right, st stand next to the tree here. There's bounce light yeah. hitting the back side of you right here. Oh, that looks nice. That's epic. Yeah. yeah oh wow. If you if you toggle it right here, there's a big difference in terms of. That is a big difference. Like lose, it loses all yeah, the shadow. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like detail. Crisis does have some large scale ambient occlusion, but it's usually set for overhangs to work really well or underneath trees. So it doesn't work on like these sloped inclines. This looks pretty good though, still. This was always one of those moments in Crisis I remember Gosh. well. The way the, the, sh the long shadows cast from the trees, the s sun rays, the crepuscular rays coming from the sun there. Of course, they are screen space, yeah. but hey, it was 2007. I mean, just. This was a beautiful I mean, just, moment. You know, it makes you a little sad that Crytek didn't ever make a co-op mode for any of their official Crisis games. Like, this is just a like, really cool idea, kind of predator going around, killing dudes. I don't know. And you know, let's. Uh, while, while we've got reshade up, we should probably mess around with some of the. Oh yeah, here, wait. Make stuff. me look incredibly cinematic, John. Please. Okay. Take your time. I'm waiting. I'm deciding. Okay, let's see here. I'm going to open up. So this is kind of the magic of reshade is, of course, if you guys used it, you know it. I'm going to use this one because it, this one works fairly well. Yeah, of course, Pascal has his own version of Depth of Field, which is quite intense and has a lot of great options to cover. Um, but right now, just for ease of use, there's a, one with a nice kind of automatic exposure, right? Yeah, and I'm actually manually adjusting this one Ooh. to to look uh, kind of. John, <laughs> my blood is covering the bush next to you. By the way, <laughs> oh jeez, <laughs> this is just ridiculous. But yeah, that looks. It's obviously you know, this makes me think of those old Watchdog screenshots, <laughs> where it was just like leaving depth of field enabled all the time. But it gives you an idea. It's like it gives you this idea of like, oh, what if they did that for the the iron sights view but you can't really see anything it's not really <laughs> no like this. depth of field in most games beyond i would say a nice kind of back of the weapon depth of field like killzone does uh which the crisis games yeah. eventually ended up doing later uh, it's not very useful for most things i mean looking down sights in crisis it adds some slightly to the stuff next to you which is always nice looking um but, that's right uh, yeah so yeah let's let's toggle the uh there we go it's just, it's fun to just see the difference as we just kind of go through the world on and yeah. off like this. It's it's a really curious here, thing, though, doing this in screen yeah, here, space. Yeah, take a look at, like, the, uh, an area yeah. with a lot of occlusion. Like, uh, let's go, like, right under under the side of this bush. Like, right here. You you have it yeah, on that's probably and then the best. Off. And, like, you can yeah. see, like, since it is in screen space, it does have a good idea of where things are located near each other. But... It can't like necessarily always tell how close objects that are directly right next to each other actually are. So like the branch in front of me right here with this tree is actually kind of throwing some shade behind it on the tree behind it, which it really shouldn't be doing if it were going through world space here. Or John's gun, for example, is shading the area underneath it right next to me, even though it's, you know, in world space, it's not at all like that. It's kind of like, the, the limitations are there and it's but overall i think it's actually a great at least for a game like crisis which has just like a generic ambient shade to its indirect lighting i think it's uh <laughs> i mean if i just toggle it right here now um i think it's kind of worth it actually it, uh, i definitely love what it does yeah, to the i game. agree uh, it's a yeah. fun addition but let's uh let's yeah, try to make some progress but here getting back to where we were earlier um to get this running today crisis this mod is developed for Crisis Wars. Crisis Wars is an expansion basically that came out around the time Crisis Warhead came out that was the multiplayer component for Crisis. The GameSpy servers which hosted the master server for this which needed a login shut down years ago. So there's tons of community right. efforts to get this working. And originally we tried using this co-op mod just by itself. Well, that didn't work. Then we tried using uh, a mod called CrySurve. Well, that doesn't work with other mods necessarily. It only works with Crisis Wars itself. 
Then we tried something called, I don't know, German Crisis, which as John put it, it just made it sound like the most hardcore <laughs> version of Crisis that ever existed. Uh, if you use exactly. the Crisis Wars EX mod plus German Crisis, <laughs> then this will work. Then you have to also log into some server that's actually in Siberia, probably, for all I know. Uh, but it, uh, it, works. it works. Here we are. I mean, I, I kind of ex exploded in glee the first time we loaded the server up, both because of the fact that it took probably around eight hours today to get this working, and the fact that, <laughs> and right. the fact that I was, you know, doing some this kind of a dream come true. I'm playing Crisis in co-op. Uh, you know, the quality of the mod notwithstanding. You can't pick no, up sticks. Sticks, for sticks are overrated, John. Come on. Chicken sticks, I mean. Come but on. look at. Oh, no, yeah. We're, I mean, yeah. Palm. We're playing in DX9, but we, you know, hacked in the palm and also the object motion blur, which is completely broken after a certain uh, distance. Yeah. Like, if John moves over there, and I should be able to see him break. Do you see me move, breaking? Yeah, I, I see you breaking down a little bit. But also, it's like when you're piloting vehicles, oh, like yeah. boats. Oh, uh, your hands <laughs> yeah. glitch out. Yeah, uh, this is a cool area to show some uh, some of the uh, GI working. We can actually steal like this the, Jeep here. The GI working Hummer. here, like, no, that looks really good, actually. Uh, yeah, it does. I... John's feet are a bit like lighter from the sand, you know. Yeah, it's still the Hummer. It was really, yeah. Ooh, let's, let's go. Do you want to drive? I'll drive. I'll take the wheel. Hey, wait. You should... Well, uh, you know what, though? Before we get in, I should turn on screen space. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Nothing is better than turning on screen space reflections. While you oh, do that, I'm going to yeah. just... Uh, Look at that. It's on. Yeah, I'm going to turn on some SSR. No, wait. No, no. SSR is overrated. I think I've kind of always wanted a bunch of extra motion blur. Because, you know, everyone at okay. DF knows that I love motion blur. And a little tilt shift, a little bit of tint, you know, like let's. Wow. Hey, while we're here, you know, you can, wow. you can actually see the um, <laughs> the plane from the introduction. Oh, dang, oh it all tamed. You can so. see the plane from the inter introduction of the game. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, the thing exactly. is, this mod spawns you at a, like, basically at a point after you get off the plane, so it never despawns the plane. Yep. Uh, it's amazing. Exactly. Looking. That's why there's an a there's, the alien wow. is there, the plane is there. So it's like we live it's it's almost like real science fiction now. We're, we're in this strange world. <laughs> but now I have SSR on, okay, I'm ready to drive. Right. I'm gonna, okay, now I'm monochrome. Oh god, there's guys behind us, John. Don't die. Dude, okay, wait, nope. just drive forward a bit. Oh no. I'm out. They're right Where behind us. You know, this is the usual truck that moves out the beach here. Oh yeah. Right. I mean I'm gonna try and go predator mode on them, but it's kind of dangerous. And I can't even tell where the enemies are yeah. because my screen is sepia toned. Okay, I got him. He's down. They're both down. There's a guy that hops out of the jeep always. Oof. You know, this is noir crisis. Okay. I'm going to turn off a couple of these because they're horrifying looking together. Oh, there we go. Here, I'll let's also get turn off the here. Oh, look at this. Do you see his, is his hat visible on yours right here? There's a, there's a nice uh, North Korean hat. <laughs> okay, here for me. mine it's on the ground right here. See, this is, you know, it's just part of the fun of this <laughs> co op mod. That's probably it's like, why they disabled hey, you, wait, it. Wait, wait, John. Of... What? Pick up that assault rifle. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I have no guns, uh, which is the obviously the nano suit ninja way to play Crisis. So let's do this. Get in the turret. Uh, I'm trying to. What do you hit F, right? F, yeah. Nope. Can't get in. Oh, there's no. Oh no. Well, you better get your own jeep. Okay. No, it's exploding. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Why did that happen? It looked healthy from my perspective. Wow, this, the fire looks strange. With oh, is it because shades. it's shooting through it? Yeah. See, for me, I... Th oh. Oh, what's going on? No. Just like dust in the wind, John. 
Well, I guess I'll pick up an AK. We're gonna have to hoof it then. <laughs> this is let's just. Uh, I got SSR on, so I'm walking on the glass beach. Where the heck are you? This is John. I'm right here. Where'd you go? I'm right here. Uh, John, what you. if I told you that for me, you're still inside the jeep? <laughs> John. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. It's like real life ghost dad. <laughs> no, the, yeah. You've just been shadow banned for Digital Foundry. I'll, I'll just never even know when you were here. Oh my god, John. This is amazing. Oh wait, it's about to explode. Get away from it. <laughs> what? what? The jeep's about to explode? <laughs> oh no. Are you I was serious? <laughs> oh, okay. No. I'm right here. I'm in front of you. Oh no. Oh no. This okay. is not good. So things things have, have gotten things a bit weird. weird. Obviously, um, this mod was, you know, hyper tested, extreme QA, spent. What do you think this video is? <laughs> this this video is basically real time QA. Um, that's a funny thing. So obviously the GI lurks really well. I would say for like crevices and like green objects but when the the sand is so bright it casts so much light yeah. color on this obviously you can uh tone down the indirect lighting using a, a function oh, oh no green. It they're, they're gonna attack me okay wait you can't see what? them there's like enemies running Are you at serious us. i hear them oh no you you've okay entered they're shooting dimension. at me and they're invisible. Basically, the t the tables have turned. They all have perfect nano suits. Wait, I see one over there. <laughs> he's kind of. Yeah, he's no what? He's on the ground. He's like floating on my screen. Oh god, there's a guy in the boat. This is. This is this not is... working at all correctly. Things are getting weird, man. I I can't even see where they're shooting me from. This is amazing. Is is that a bad guy? I don't even know. I'm getting hit marker. That means usually you're damaging things, right? John, where'd you go? I'm here next to this other... Aren't there bad truck. guys here? See? No. John, I see you driving the pickup truck, but there's no one inside of it. <laughs> John! John! <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> <laughs> We've entered the twilight zone. Oh gosh, you have your. F oh, oh, you just popped. You were. Yo, you appeared. Oh my god. Thank, thank, John. I'm back. What was it like on the other side? <laughs> Tell me. It was strange and dark, and there were many Koreans. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, you know, this is uh, this is this mod is amazing, and also I, st I still have SSR on, and this is just. It's the best. I mean, from my perspective, actually, one of my favorite views in Crisis is when you go into this jungle over here on the right-hand side. Yeah. Uh, it's, like, all, like, dark. And it's, like, one of my favorite views of Crisis before it originally came out. I mean, oh, yeah, the thing is, yeah, we're playing yeah. the multiplayer version of Crisis, so it has technically less, like, undergrowth and underbrush, which kind of is a bit sad. But this area still looks so good. And this is what it looks like with the RT on and then off. You know, pretty big difference, if you ask me. Yeah, it, do it does look quite different, indeed. <laughs> this is just, this is the most, this is complete madness. What's happening here today? Oh, my. I guess we should... If you couldn't tell, this, this it's video gone off is the just walls. <laughs> completely... It's gone, it's gone way off the rails, but that's part of the fun. That's what you get yeah. here. On Only family. the highest quality criticism of graphics and performance. Well, this does look really good, though. Just kind of like the bloom lighting off the back of... I hear it's, what was that sound? Uh oh. Are, are there Koreans stalking us now, too? There might be. All right, so let's advance. This next village part is like uh, where you first get grenades. That would be kind of cool to see what happens there. You know, kind of fun way to look back at Crisis and co-op with... A really cool mod by Pascal here, Marty McFly. You can support him on Patreon should you so wish. And uh, I definitely suggest it because, you know, this is going to get advanced further. The quality is going to go up. It's probably going to become more stable over time, run better. Because we've been playing at 1080p and if we go above that on RTX 2080 Ti's... Oh, wow, that isn't right. John. What? Uh, let's just say it looks like I'm playing... I don't even know what game this is anymore. 
This is amazing because what I do in the console affects you. Are you serious, John? Do that again. This is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, I'm trying to think of what it's kind of like. I don't know. It reminds me of <laughs> I don't know something like like Arma One or something like that. Like oh god, that looked amazing. Um, basically, yeah, as we continue to joke around about this, um, please <laughs> consider supporting Pascal on Patreon. Marty McFly does a great version of this game, and I think it's a, a cool mod. Reshade has been a great thing for PC ever since its dawn of existence, and, you know, I've used it countlessly. I've, I, at times, I've, you know, I've made a video about it due to just basically how impressed I am with how it works across so many titles. Uh, but if you did enjoy this video, you know, tell us if you liked it in the comments. We're, you know, always consider doing more things like this in the future that are fun, talk about something new, and maybe community driven. Oh my god, there's Koreans everywhere, John. Um, oh, it's just, it's, it's gone off, it's gone off, off the, rails. the rails again. Um, we're, back <laughs> we're, rails. we're back off the rails. But as these rails, oh, and as I say that, the game crashes. So, I think that's a perfect place to end it. I think that's a perfect it. place uh, to end it. Yes. So please, if you did enjoy this silly little video looking at community content, well, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. If you're already a subscriber, well, hit that little bell button in the corner because it really does help us, even as I'm crashed to desktop right now. And um, if, you know, if you want to talk to us about, you know, Crisis, Crisis Co-op, or this awesome version of Reshade Ray Chase GI in screen space, well, write a comment below or follow John and I or Digital Foundry on Twitter. And I guess I could say at the end of this video, John, what? Um, the Alpha Seth? <laughs>